If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. We're going to be talking today with Colby Jones. He's been kind enough to come on to the podcast and let me do an energy review for his business, which I'm super excited to do. So welcome, Colby. You want to tell the listeners uh, who you are and what you do and what we're going to be talking about today in terms of your business? Definitely. Thanks, Kelly. I'm Colby Jones, travel agent. I own a travel agency. I've been doing it for 20 plus years. And we do all things travel. And people often say, like, why still a travel agency? Long story short, we have better prices. We give you better service. We give you more information. And we help you find the right fit. That's what we do. Short and sweet. So you are a concierge for discerning travelers, effectively. (laughs) Yes, we are. (laughs) Thank you for the very lovely title. He's like, I love that. (laughs) Feel free to steal it. Okay. (laughs) So today we're going to do what's known as a business energy review. And what that means is that we're, I'm going to take a look at your business and because of the structure of your business, you have, you still have a fairly small number of people who work for you. You've got like six or eight people, right? Yeah. Correct. So because yeah. you're still in that that not huge business structure, a lot of this is going to focus on you as the business owner because your energy is holding the energy of the company right now. And so as we get larger and larger is as a business, what happens is that when we bring more people in to take over more of the main tasks of the business, the energy gets distributed across many different people. And therefore the business itself begins to have a morphic field of its own. And so let me define morphic field. Uh, Morphic field means, so like everybody's got their own aura, right? The aura is the energy field of the person. The morphic field is the equivalent of an aura for an entity on the energetic. And so the more, and it could be a morphic, morphic fields usually come together when groups of people come together. Okay. And so morphic field is the combination of the energies of all the people involved in the business. And so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about this. Any group you put together in any environment will have its own morphic field, but businesses are a, they're a more solid thing because they're ongoing, right? Whereas if you have just a group of people who come together for a retreat or a group of people who come together for class, that's a a temporary morphic field, whereas a business has a permanent morphic field. And the culture that you create within that business creates the energetic of the morphic field. The marketing that you do creates the energetic of how that morphic field is seen in the world. And so we're going to be talking about your business from an energetic perspective today. And that energy is going to inform the the practical business aspects. So does that make sense? So cool. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, it makes sense. Okay. I'm just so blown away by it. Like, I'm really excited. Awesome. All right. So what I'm going to need in order to do this is I'm going to need permission to access your personal energy field since your energy is going to be holding a lot of the business right now. And then the energy field of the business as well. Is that okay? Do I have permission to do that? Please go ahead. (laughs) Okay. All right. Yes, you have permission. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the outside of the energy first and see what the outside influences are that are happening and are impacting what's going on with you. Then I'm going to look at your aura personally and see sort of where you are right now. It's going to just it's going to just be a indicator of what's true in you in this moment. And then we're going to go in and look at each of the chakras individually and what is happening within each of those chakras. Are you familiar at all with the chakra system? Very, very little. I, I know okay. of them, but I All couldn't right, so tell you I'll much. Crown and I go then. Oops. Yeah, that's fine. I'll describe okay. them as I go. Okay, That'll good. be good. And then uh, what I'll find is the blocks that exist in each of the chakras. And I'll, at the end, so if there's a quick fix for the block, I will give it to you in the moment. 
Okay. And then at the end, what I'll do is I'll say, okay, here are the themes that I've discovered. And here are the blocks that relate to those themes. And then here is the order in which I would address those things in order to be most efficient in the moving of the energies. Okay. And I could do tests of different things and whatnot. Now, the other thing that I would like to talk to you about as we go through this is what are the initiatives you've got coming up? What are the partnerships you're considering? What are, you know, the things that are coming, if you have contracts coming in, things like that, we can have some conversation around that at the same time. And I can give you a yes or no, you don't need to give me company names, you just need to really clearly see who it is that you're thinking about and say, the company X that that you know, the company that's doing X, right? So you can say like, Oh, you know, this contract that I have over here with this cruise line or this contract I have over here with this tour group or whatever, but you don't, you don't have to give me names because I don't want to do that. But if you've got a clear idea, then I will get the clear energetic on it. Okay. And then I can give you some advice on how that works. Okay. Okay. Now the, there are going to be some interesting pathways along the way that we'll talk about. And if you have an employee there or a contractor that you're thinking about hiring, this would be a great time to bring that up too, because I can get a feel for how they're going to fit into the organization and things like that. All of these things are great. Okay. All right. You can do it all. Yeah. Cool. It's it's my deal, bam. That's what I do. All right. So, all right. So (laughs) we're going to get started and this is going to be, a rather in-depth episode, guys. So if you are listening, uh, just know that this is not going to be our normal half-hour episode. This, Anytime I'm doing something this in-depth with a business, it usually takes an hour, maybe an hour and a half. So you you knew that when you signed up for this podcast because you can see how long it's going to be and you know more than I do right now. But just, just know it's worth it to sit and listen to the end. So make sure you listen to the end because all of the good stuff comes together at the end. Okay? All right. So let me just, uh, what I'm going to do, I have permission to tap in. Uh, What I'm going to say is if you have questions in the moment, please stop me and ask them. Okay. I'm going to be talking like nonstop. (laughs) So don't feel like you can't break in. Feel free to, you know, raise your hand or whatever. And, and I will uh, stop talking long enough for you to ask me a question. I will often have my eyes closed because I'm visualizing what I'm seeing. So if you need to you clear your throat and you're going to say, Hey, what about this? Okay. And then that way I can answer questions as I've got you in the moment. Cool. All right. So give me one second and I'll be right there. The only thing I'm going to ask is do not look at your phone or notifications while I do this because anybody you tap into through the process is going to, their energy is going to come into yours and I'm going to end up reading them instead of you. Okay. So stay, stay with me during the journey or else the reading can get very mixed. Okay. All right, cool. Okay, all you. Okay, so the first thing I'm getting is I tap into your aura, well, into the the outside of your aura and, and the aura of your business here is there's, there's a lot of moving parts going on. I, I feel like there's like all these things circling you right now. And, and it feels like, it feels like things are coalescing, right? It's, it's, it, it doesn't feel like a spinny, you know, out of control thing or anything like that. It feels like there is a lot of business hanging out around the edges that's just starting to come together. And I know that before we got on this call, you said that there were like, three companies or something like that. There's a lot more than that in this field. Okay. I'm, I'm seeing you completely surrounded on all sides by all this business that's waiting to happen for you. And so the, uh, the, yeah, (laughs) two thumbs up, right? (laughs) The, the thing to keep in mind is sanity as you're pulling these things together, right? Because growing too quickly is always a risk that you're going to lose quality along the way. So the, uh, the piece is to remember that something that is exclusive is often hard to get into. And so when these, when these companies start coming in fast and furious 
and you know you don't have the capacity built yet, you need to say, hey, you know, we're at capacity right now. I'm building capacity. Happy to work with you. Give me a month or two and we can work on that. But I'm so popular right now that I'm really I, I'm I don't want to take on business that I don't know for certain I can serve at the highest level. And that gives you both integrity and it gives you exclusivity in the vision uh, that you're giving to the other companies, as you're saying, not right now. And so, you know, make sure that you're growing at a sane capacity rate for yourself, because with this much business coming in, that can be a problem in the big scheme of things. Now, I know that before COVID, you guys were a lot bigger. So you've got all the systems, presumably, because you were doing it back then. Um, and so you've got the systems in place. So that's going to be super good. But you may want to start sourcing more people to service the business that's coming in right now, because there's some spin up time on getting new people on board, obviously, right? So that's, that's one of those things yep. that I'm seeing here. And I'm, I'm seeing let me I'm seeing 10 right now that are hanging in the ethers. Uh, so the three that you know about plus seven more and then yeah uh, there's over a hundred out in the in the in the further ethers. so that's when I say big, I mean big so be prepared okay All right let me see what the company okay. is asking for in regards to that. Give me a second. Okay, so the company, the energy of the company is asking for more financial planning to be put in place and, and not just planning, but checks and balances. So it, it feels like you're doing all of the accounting and stuff and that, that there's, it feels like there's not quite enough checks and balances in place for the amount of people that you're going to have. Keep in mind that every time you add people to the company, you're going to increase the complexity of your communication, right? So for every four people you add, you double the amount of communication mm -hmm. that has to happen, right? So the same thing is going to be true for your checks and balances. I want you to really pay attention to where are places where the checks and balances internally are not as strong as they could be so that you don't leak money to minor embezzlement, right? So just to be be careful around that. There's there's some checks and balances that need to happen for you. Okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you do you have a sense of that? Yeah. Yeah, that makes great sense. It, okay. It's actually been kinda on my mind a little bit is all the new people to I mean you're you're just hitting home runs right right and left so far. <laughs> Keep going. Okay. All right. So yeah, that's the thing that the company is asking for the most right now. Let me see. Let me just tap into the internal of the company itself. Um, so you, the way that you're holding your company right now is um, it's interesting because when I when I see men versus women and in building a company, women tend to gestate a company like a baby. They hold the business inside of their energy field. Men tend to overlap with the company. And so they create this sort of Venn diagram where there's a center point that is both. And so that's what I'm seeing for you. And so let me hop over into the company only side of this. Yeah, it feels like things are not quite settled. Um, so I don't know if you just onboarded a bunch of new people or, you know, what's going on there, but it feels like the structure and organization isn't quite settled. And so before onboarding more, you want to get that settled and solid because the more people you bring, the more the chaos will expand if you don't get the structure settled first, right? And the last thing you want is chaos in your business because there's enough chaos in the travel world altogether. So travel itself is chaos. So you want your, your structure to be solid, right? So that the chaos isn't in both places for the people working for you, right? And that's how you keep people too, is, mm -hmm. is by giving them a solid structure. As business owners, our job is to hold a solid container for the people who work for us so that they know what's expected of them, how to do a good job, what the metrics are by which they will be judged and, and rewarded 
for, you know, compensation purposes and, you know, what the, the edges of their authority are and when to reach out for help. Those structures are super important in order to give a safe and solid container for your employees and staff. Uh, you're using contractors, obviously, but for that level. And that's one of the hardest things for us as, as employers to do because it requires us to have a lot of structure in our own minds. And as entrepreneurs, we tend to not be terribly structured because we like to fly by the seat of our pants and make things go. But, you know, the, it is necessary for that. So, um, so that's, that's the other piece that I'm seeing in the company itself. Let me take a look in the Venn diagram between the two and see what that is. Okay. So I'm feeling like you're a little overwhelmed, that there's a lot to spin up, a lot to do, a lot to get moving. And you know how it's supposed to work. You've done it before. But that doesn't mean it's easy. And it doesn't mean that it's fast. And things have shifted in the interim. Yeah. Is it, you want to say something? <laughs> No, you're, you're exactly correct. Sorry, I don't, I, I'm not trying to interrupt you. I'm agreeing with you. It is very overwhelming right now at the moment. Yeah. And so the thing that I'm going to say is it's okay to hire help and not just marketing help, but structure help, right? There are people that you could hire to come in and help you put this structure in place. And given the level of overwhelm that's here because you're having to do it all right now to get everything respun up from post COVID stuff. Because of that, you got too much to do, dude. You have too much. And just admit that you have too much. And it doesn't mean you're not good enough. It just means there's too much to do and, and it takes more than one person to get it all done. And so I highly recommend that you find some help, right? So I know that this, uh, you know, that this business has been a family business. So is your mom still around to help? Because I know she started this. No, no. she is not. Oh. Okay. So yeah, she, she, she passed away in 2015. Ah, sorry to hear that. So I will say that she is around in spirit because I can feel her still in the business. That's why I asked. Um, so she is, she is still around in spirit with you. The, whew, yeah, big tingles on that one. And she's actually, so, okay. So what she's telling me is that she's working from the other side to make this happen. She's the one lining up that hundred people on the back, on the outline there. She's like, she's just, all you got to do is the physical part and she's cool. taking care of the rest of it <laughs> because she's just like, nope, we're going to get this up and running cool. again. You're going to, you're going to be rocking and rolling soon. Okay. So mom's working on the other side for you. And, um, oh, okay. And she says that she's going to send you the right person to help you with this structuring piece. So all you got to do is keep your eyes open and pay attention because she, it's, it's, uh, she says it's not somebody, you know, and it's not even somebody she knew, but she's got the right person that she wants to send to you. And you'll, the, that person's going to show up randomly through your either an email or somebody's going to mention something, but they're going to come in through a random venue. Okay. You don't have to go looking for them. They're going to come to you. She's sending them to you. Okay. So just be prepared to say yes when they show Perfect. up. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Uh, be open and pay attention is all she's saying. Okay. Okay. And the pay attention yeah. piece is when she's hitting hard. Is that something she used to say to you a lot? Because I feel like it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a thing that she said, but Thanks, anyway. Mom. Just clear <laughs> out all the dirty laundry right here for the whole world. Thanks a lot, mom. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So there's, there's another person coming in and they're going to help you with the structuring. And that's, that's good. Cause you got, you you got a full plate. You're doing marketing and you know, structuring and hiring and training and, 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 right. So, uh, say yes to whatever help shows up. Okay. All right. Now let me go into your aura alone. All right. Yeah. So you know, 
the same things in your aura, but there's a little bit of imposter syndrome going on in there too, right? There's a little bit of, uh, can I really do all of this? Can I really get this done? And, you know, part of you knows that you can, but part of you is so overwhelmed that you're just like, ah, right? And that happens when, what happens when we have overwhelm because we're trying to do too much is our inner child shows up and starts trying to run the bus for us. <laughs> we're trying to drive the bus and the inner child can't reach the pedals. Okay. And so they feel completely overwhelmed and that's what happens. And then they start to, they, that's where the imposter syndrome comes up. That's when the, I don't know if I can do this comes up and all of that stuff shows up. And it's not because your adult thinks that it's because your inner child is trying to drive the bus. And so, you know, the key is to just sort of close your eyes and look at your inner child and say, dude, such a great job. You're doing such a great job. Thank you so much. Why don't you go play in the back of the bus and I'm going to drive for a while and then, you know, jump in and actually drive the bus again and you will stop feeling as overwhelmed as you had been before. Okay. So that's issue number one. Issue number two is take three things off your list immediately. And that will also reduce the overwhelm. So we tend to keep a list of all the things that we can do or need to be done in front of us, all of them. Don't do that. That'll add to the overwhelm in a big way, right? So pick the things that you're going to do for today, the things that you know you absolutely can get done today, done, done, not maybe I'll get it done, not eight more than I think I can get done, but actually you know you can get done and that's your list for the day. And if you're terrible at that, then make the list and then cut it in half. And that'll be the right amount. Okay. But when okay. you can just have the things that you need to get done for the day in front of you, the then the overwhelm reduces dramatically. Okay. So I have a tendency, like I'm, I'm doing the same thing you're doing right now. I'm up leveling my business in a big way. And there are so many things on my to-do list right now. <laughs> I'm just like, ah, right. But I only look at one of them at a time and I don't have them written down anywhere because if I did, it would make me crazy. Right. I'd be like, ah, too much. To do. <laughs> right. <clears throat> but can I, I ask can. you a really quick question? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Okay. You earlier, you said something about tingles and Every time you close your eyes, I feel like a tingle in the back of my neck. Is that weird? Is that normal? No, that's, like, that's am you. I going crazy? <laughs> so I, I often, so I do, I do a lot of these, or I have done a lot of these with energy workers, and they all tell me I tickle. And so <laughs> that's your feeling me tapping into your energy field. That's what you're feeling every time I'm doing that. That's you're, you're energetically oh. aware. Okay. So like, that says is that you're an empath. I, I was aware of it, but I didn't say anything until you mentioned tingles. And I was like, okay, maybe it's not just me. All right. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I, Nope, that's that's a new great experience. Question. Keep keep going. Yeah. No, I get that all the time from people. They're like, oh, you tickle. I'm like, okay. <laughs> So you're just feeling okay. my energy okay. tapping into your energy field. So, yeah. Okay. So crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't expect okay, that. So let me see if there's anything else in the aura that, or in the morphic field or the intersection that they want me to tell you. Give me a second. Mm-hmm. The, the image they're giving me is putting the safety bar down on your roller coaster ride and saying, get ready. <laughs> so that's okay, what they're telling me. I like them. that. It's, it's going to be a roller coaster a ride. Go for it, guy. The safety bar in place. And here we go, right? Buckle up, Buttercup is the message, right? So, okay. Yeah, so that's, that's everything from there. Let me check into your seventh chakra. So we're going to start at the seventh chakra and work my way down. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to start by talking about the seventh chakra is um, your connection to the divine, your connection to your guides, your ability to pull energy through your body and circulate it from the universal source. Uh, and so I'm going to look for a bunch of different things in that regard. So give me one second. 
First thing I'm looking for is energy flow. Okay, so I've got energy coming in, but no energy going out. So what that says to me is that somewhere there is an energy drain happening in your system because if you're not letting energy out, it's because you're feeling drained in other ways. So let me take a look and see where that might be. I'm going to check your root chakra and see. Okay, so your root chakra is kind of challenge too. We'll talk about that when we get to the bottom. But I do want to say this before I move on from having been talking with your mom, because there is an energy at the root chakra. There's a, a plate under your feet, the steel plate under your feet that I see whenever I see somebody who is doing something where they have given someone else permission to pass judgment on their lives. And this feels like you had given that to mom and that, that if mom disapproved, it would pull the, your feet out from under you. You'd end up flat on your butt and you're like, Oh, what's wrong with me? I suck. Right? So mom has passed. And so therefore, unless you're psychic like me, you know, getting approval from mom is a tough thing to do. Right? So what I want to tell you is that mom is saying that she is extraordinarily proud of you. She thinks that you weathered the storm of COVID so well, and she is so proud of you for what you did and so proud of you for how you're relaunching. And you have her apps. Ooh, I'm so I wish you could see the goosebumps coming up on my arm right now. That's, that's truth being spoken. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I've got literal bumps all over my arm. I don't know if you can see that, but anyway, but she is, she is incredibly proud of you and she is. She feels like she left her legacy in the right hands and she knows you're going to kill it and she's going to do everything she can to help you from where she is. And she says, you know, live your life. Don't live the life you think I wanted you to have. Okay. okay. So that's, is that everything? Yeah there's a little regret for being a little overly perfectionistic and controlling from her, but yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, she says that she could have been nicer and she wishes that she had been, but that she got overstressed sometimes. So, um, she was, thought she was plenty nice. So yeah. Yeah. So Tell her she's good. Well, that, that's just her feeling. So she just, she wants to share the, the incredible love that she has for you and that, that, that is not gone, even though she is on the other side, she's just, she's going to keep sending good things your way. Okay. So, um, love anything it. else you want to say? No. Okay. That's, that's a complete message. So, um, Okay, let me check in on the energy flow now. All right, energy coming up from the root now. Good. That took care of that. Still not a lot of outflow. Okay. So we'll look at why that's happening as we go through the rest of the chakras and see where you've got a drain coming there's some sort of drain happening on your system because you wouldn't be able to take in all this energy and not let it go out again the way it's supposed to unless there's something else sucking energy from your field somewhere else. So we'll look for that as we go further down. All right, so let's take a look at cool. what else is in this You, you mentioned the chakra, is that? Yep, this Is that one. head? Where, where, where are all these chakras? So, so we're looking at the okay. crown chakra right now. Just curious. Then we'll do third eye which will be right in between your eyes and on your forehead, then throat chakra, then heart chakra, then the solar plexus, which is right at your diaphragm. And then the, oh my God, my brain just went, ah, uh, sacral, root. thank you. Sacral chakra, which is just below your belly button. And then the root chakra, which is at the base of your torso. Okay. And so those are going to be the chakras we're going to be looking at as we do this. So uh, right now we're in the crown chakra, which is at the top of your head. And then let's see what else is going on here. Hold on. 
Okay, so you have the ability to be a channel if you chose to be. So I just want you to know that. And channeling is uh, where you are allowing someone else to talk through you. Okay, right now you've got it shut down, which if you don't know how to do channeling, that's a good idea to have it shut down because that way you don't channel by accident, which is possession. We don't want to do that, right? So, no, but if no. you decided that you wanted to learn that skill, you could. The nice thing about having that skill is that, that it gives you a little bit more access to more information for intuition purposes. And as a business owner, that can be super helpful. You can like, you know, sit down and do automatic writing and things like that, where you can ask questions and get answers from your guides and things like that. So that can be super helpful. It's a skill you could develop if you wanted to. You have a natural, ten, uh, natural aptitude for it. Okay. You definitely got mind on overdrive going on. That's definitely going on in here. And that's just because your brain's going a million miles a minute and you're like, ah, this and that and this and that and this and that, right? You know, a meditative <laughs> meditation practice is usually advised for this. I don't feel like you're a good fit for a meditation practice because it doesn't feel like your natural way of being for the sitting meditation. But what I will say is that meditation takes many forms. And so, you know, I feel like there's a hobby you have that might be useful for meditation. So like if you like to fish or if you like to anything that has you doing a lot of nothing for a while, right? That's a good meditation practice for you. Whether hockey. it's running. What's that? Hockey. It's hockey. I know that doesn't sound like a lot of nothing, but for me, no, that's, right. that's, that's my escape from the world. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great for you. And the other piece I would say is to slow your morning routine. You have a tendency to get out of bed and just go, 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 go from the moment you get up. And I would like you to slow your routine to be more like before you get out of bed, I want you to allow your brain to drift, not make a list of the things you have to do. Okay. If the to do's come up, have a pad of paper next to your bed so that you can just write them down and then go back to drifting. Before you wake up, wake up, there is a state of mind that exists that is a theta state that you're in, which is where most people put you for good um, uh, manifesting. And so I want you to sit in that between sleep and waking state. And I want you to drift. And if you have a question that you don't know the answer to, I want you to just place it into the drift and not hold on to it. Okay. You're not thinking about it. it think of it like you've just, ex you, you've let a bubble with this in it go into the ethers and the ethers will carry it and bring you back an answer. And you're not going to worry about it. And you're going to just continue to drift you're going to let thoughts come and go and you're going to not not hold on to anything. You're letting everything go and you, until something pops in that's relevant and it may or may not pop in that day. OK, so you're going to lay in that state for as long as you can every morning, which it's going to feel like a lot longer than it is. It's probably going to end up being about 10 or 15 minutes. OK, so it's but it's going to feel like it's a lot longer than that. OK, but that will do a lot okay. for helping you to start in a less stressed state. And that will help you to find clarity around what you're doing each day and things like that better, because you're not starting off going, I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to. Right. So that for you is going to be super helpful. All right. Now, um, let's see here. What else? Yeah, so there's some blocked masculine energy here. So, and by that, the, the masculine energy tends to be related to structure and form 
and, you know, holding space, which is not surprising given the conversation that we had earlier. But for men in particular, when there is blocked masculine, it's often an issue of relationship to your father and, and having some and or having definitions of masculinity that are things that you don't want to be that are existent in your your mindset. So for instance, if you were, if, if, and I, I don't know your family history, so I'm not going to ask you to out yourself here, but if, if a father was abusive, for instance, and you associate masculinity, uh, well, I'm not saying that he was, I'm just trying to give you an example so that you can look in your oh, yeah. own family, no, no. right? Yep. But if, if your father was abusive and you're looking for, and, and you're part of your definition of being a man is being abusive, and then you separate yourself from that and then now you are in conflict with what the definition of being a man is, and you're a man, assuming you identify as a man, and then uh, then you have a challenge with stepping fully into the, the holding of the masculine energy in your own life, because your definition of, of a man is in conflict with who you want to be in the world. So the suggestion here would be to really sit down and make a list for yourself of what your definition of being a man is. And then uh, without any question about whether or not that's who you want to be, just make the list without editing it, whatever shows up as you're making the list, just make the list. And then once you've made the list, then you can go, even if you say that's ridiculous, right, I want you to write it down. If, if it comes to mind and you say that's ridiculous, that's the most important thing for you to write down, okay? But but just write it all down. Okay. And then after you've got the whole list done, go back and say, is this who I want to be? Is this who I want to be? Is this who I want to be? And then you'll find the thing that's in the way, right? And then you can debunk the belief or you can say, I don't have to choose to be that person or, you know, whatever it is. But that's a way to uh, to clear this particular block and that will also help you to step more into that sort of ability to structure space because it will put you in touch with the inner masculine uh, and balance it with the inner feminine, which we'll look at in the, in the root chakra. Okay. Cause the goal is to be balanced in our lives. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? Perfect sense. Okay, great. All right. So, all yeah. right. So is there anything else in this chakra? Let me just ask. Interesting. What is that related to? Hold on. Okay, so I'm I'm moving down into the sixth chakra with the um, the intuition, right? But there is uh, something in this seventh chakra that is related to something in the sixth. And as I start to talk there, it, I, I'm getting the sense it'll come up. We'll see because they're giving it to me, but they're not giving it to me. Right. So uh, let me, let me get the rest of this in and we'll, we'll see how that goes. Okay. So six chakra is your third eye. It's your intuition. And so the, the key is in this one is to pay attention to, you've got a transmitter and you've got a receiver. And so the transmitter is when you ask a question, you go out to the Akashic records, you get the information and you bring it back. Your receiver is what most people think about as their intuition, which is, you know, you're picking up on things in the ethers. So you think of someone and then they call you that sort of thing, right? That's the, the intuition that most people think about. So that's your receiver piece. And so let me just test and see how yours are doing. Transmitters working well for going out. Coming back is okay. but you're only getting part of the message. So it's like you've got a partial block on the receiving side of your transmitter on the, you know, it goes out and then it comes back and then it gets filtered through something. Let me see what the filter is, hold on. Can I believe it? That's the filter is, so you've, you've, you're actually incredibly psychic, but you limit your ability oh. to be psychic based on what you're believing will allow you to believe you can know. 
So you're getting, you're pulling in a lot more information, but you're only allowing through what your disbelief will allow. And so <laughs> the, the, the invitation here is to suspend your disbelief. You don't have to believe it. You just have to suspend your disbelief like you do when you go to a movie. You know it's just a movie, but you invest in the story, right? You're suspending your disbelief that it's not real, right? And so that would be okay. the invitation here is suspend your disbelief that you're not psychic, okay? All right. Okay. Um, let me check the receiver. Okay, your receiver is wide open, which is really awesome. So that actually works out well. Um, and so you're, you're getting all kinds of great information just from the ethers. So you, you tend to be sort of in the flow without trying too much. That's what this would, would do for you, is right. that you happen to go to the right places and, you know, pick up the phone and call the right people at the right times. You know, there's a, there's a way in which you're, you're in the flow in that regard. Does that make sense? Is that yes, true it does. You? Yeah. Okay. So pretty, pretty accurately. Um, yeah. Yeah. That happens yeah. a fair amount well, of time. That's cause you're psychic dude. Okay. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. So there's, uh, so that's, that's working well, but then there's this, this little piece of a lack of trust in the universe that's going on. And that's the piece that they were showing me in the seventh chakra. And, and it was it related, um, which is, okay. Yeah. So there's, It's very easy when you have a business that gets severely impacted by a world event to feel a little betrayed by the universe, right? And, and that, so, but it's holding you back right now. And so the thing that, that you need to do, there are challenges in life and then there are gifts. Every challenge comes with a gift. Every gift comes with a challenge, right? So, when you are looking at what happened because of the pandemic to your business, what you want to do is find the gift in what happened. Okay. And I'm going to bet really good money that part of the gift was you got unburned out. That you got to have a chance to, to be still for a while. Right. Uh, and you probably hadn't been still in a very yeah. long time. Right. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. So that was a gift, right? You got a chance to sit and look at your company and say, okay, what works and what doesn't work? And you got to, to look and find some innovations. You got to look and find some ways to do things differently. You got a chance to really, you know, evaluate who you want on board as staff and who you don't, who worked and who didn't. There, there was a, a huge amount of space that was given to you that will now allow you because you made good use of it to take off at a much higher pace and a much better rate than you would have been able to before when you were just trying to keep things going and keep up with the pace, right? Cause you're able to come in and more consciously design your business, that. right? Yeah. And so I, yeah, what I need you definitely. to do internally, is to say thank you to the universe rather than you screwed me to the universe. Okay. Because <laughs> this, this, this lack of trust is getting in the way of your manifesting. Okay. So you, you need to say, okay. you know, this is what happened. So there's a, the stages of grief are, you know, um, anger, bargaining no i'm missing one anger something else i don't remember Except anyway my brain acceptance, yeah, acceptance is either. at the end so that's why i was trying to say that i, I don't oh. know why i can't come up with these because i used to do it all the time but my brain is just not delivering it today but acceptance is the final piece of grief okay so you have grief to process from that shutdown and acceptance is the final stage of being able to say okay it was what it was 
Okay. And that's what acceptance is. It's not like I was great about it. I was happy about it. No, no, no. It was what it was and it shouldn't have been different. It just was what it was. When you stop shooting on it, then you're in acceptance. Okay. And so, you know, okay. stop looking back and saying, you know, how could I have done this differently? Or, you know, what did I do wrong or any of that? Or how did, you know, how did this happen to me or whatever? You don't want to do that. That's not helping you. Okay. What you want to do is say, okay, how do I, how do I proof my business for this? Right. And then great. And now how do I get off the, you know, up and running and doing, doing things at a higher level again. Right. And I know you're up and running, so I'm, I'm not saying you're not up and running, but how do I make things as efficient as possible from here? Right. And, you know, what did I learn from that process and how would I do things differently if it happened again? Right. That's what you need to be doing, not going about it. Right. That's the difference. Make sense. Okay. Totally makes right. sense. Cool. Okay. So let's see if there's anything else in this chakra. Yeah. Hold on. They're giving me another one. Okay. Yeah. So there's a way in which your current identity is not allowing you to step into all of the power that you hold and that you could hold in your business. And there's a, so when there's a, there's a good old boy thing going on for you, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a holding on to an earlier version of yourself, a younger version of yourself. Right. And that identity is actually holding you back from the person you could be. And so the question to ask yourself, the invitation here is to sit and say, who do I need to be to get where my, I want my business to go? And who, who is that person? What, what behaviors do they have? What habits do they have? What mindset do they hold? What uh, actions do they take on a daily basis? What are the things that describe the person that I would be if I were doing uh, running the business that I want to be running? Okay. And I want you to be really clear. I am not actually talking about how hard can you work? Okay. Because this is what we do in the West. This is what we do specifically in America. We're like, oh, how hard can I work? Can I work harder? Can I work harder? Can I do more? Can I do more? Can I do? No, 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 no. That's how you burn out. That's how you face plant the company because you plant, face planted yourself, right? And you're the pinch point because you didn't outsource enough. Okay. So uh, what I really want you to focus on is what is the life that you want to have while you're running the business you want to have? Because... I see too many entrepreneurs build the business and not worry about the life. And then they find out they don't have a life. Okay. So I want you to really sit and think about what do you, what do you want your life to look like five years from now? You know, if you, if you were looking back five years from now and everything went as well as it possibly could, I want you to make a list of what that looked like. And if you have a hard time with that, then make a list of what, what it would be it was, if it was the worst it could possibly be, and then do the opposite, and then make the opposite list after you've done that, okay? So that's, that's a piece that I want you to sit with because you need to be constructing your identity as you go, okay? And we'll talk more about identity when we get down into the third chakra, but this is what's showing up now. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's see anything else in this chakra. No. Okay. So we're coming down into fifth chakra. Fifth chakra is all about uh, self-expression and showing up in the world. And so hold on a second. I usually get this one as a physical. So give me one second to tap in. Okay. Do you see how little my mouth is open here? Yeah. You tell me to open this big, right? That's as wide as my mouth opens. Yep. This is how much self-expression you're doing right now. 
and there's a little bit of energy coming out. There's not a ton of energy coming out. So this again is how do I bring more of myself to my business? How do I be seen more? Right? So let me, let me just check in here and see where, if there are any blocks. Okay, so there's some people pleasing communication that you're doing. And what that means is that you're telling people what you think they want to hear rather than what they need to know. And or rather than what the truth is for you. And so you want to really pay attention to that because that actually, it's a conflict avoidance thing. Um, but it is, uh, it keeps you from being your authentic self. And so you do this a lot out of your heart because you don't want to hurt people's feelings or you don't want to make them feel bad or you don't want to, you know, you, you don't want to be responsible for unpleasant feelings on their part. And part of this is you've got to let them have responsibility for their own emotions. And this is going to be huge for you with hiring on staff because the, when staff realize that you do this, they will take advantage of it over time. Okay. So you want to okay. get comfortable with confrontation. And so I want to be clear when I say confrontation, I'm not saying, you know, getting up in somebody's face and yelling at them. That's not what I mean by confrontation. What I mean is confrontation means saying something that does not necessarily agree with the person in front of you, right? Because that's what's true for you. So that's going to help you with your personal relationships as well as with your business relationships. And so I know that a lot of times, especially in the hospitality industry, you have to, you know, you have to sort of massage situations because you you don't want Karens on your hands, right? Yeah, sure. I understand your hospitality, no, right? <laughs> there, there's, there's a certain amount to be done, but within the business, you, you really need to be making sure that you're not doing that inside the business, that you're actually speaking the truth, that you're actually, you know, making sure that you're the one running the ship and not, you know, letting people do whatever they want willy nilly, because that's going to contribute to the chaos that we were talking about. So that's why you provide the structure is so that they have something to work into so that that doesn't happen as much. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, it okay. does. Okay. So, okay. Well, let's see what else is going on in here. Hmm. Okay. So this is interesting. There's a little bit of not wanting to be seen going on in here. And I have the feeling that this is part of the identity issue that we're talking about that there's a there's a image you're putting up of yourself of who you want people to see you as in the world and then there's the person behind the image right and i think that's what's going on i'll see that more clearly in the third chakra but that's kind of what it feels like it because it doesn't feel like you don't want to be seen at all it's like you want people to see you as this person right and so the so there's, yeah, we'll talk more about that in the third chakra because that's, that feels like that's where it needs to be. But I'm just letting you know that that's showing up in this chakra here for self-expression. Uh, let me see. Ooh, good. Yes. Okay. So you're really connected <laughs> in to your eloquence and your fluid thought, which means that you can like open your mouth and great stuff comes out of it all the time. So that's a really good place to be for being the face of your company. That's a super great connection to have. So well done there. By the way, I didn't give you the standard disclaimer, which is that uh, I'm, I'm, I don't take it personally, if you see a lot of blocks. So blocks are just an indicator of where you are in this current level of evolution. So don't take it as a report card on your life, you have layers of, of evolution that you go through. And when you clear a layer, a whole new layer shows up, it's got a ton of blocks. When you're just about to clear a layer, you've got a few very few blocks. It's just an indication of what where you are on the current layer. It's not a whole life indication. Okay, so don't 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 get upset if you hear a lot of these. Okay, and generally it only no worries. Okay, generally it only relates to. I like, like to improve. Yeah, 
So it's usually only related to like one or three, one to three themes. So you should be fine by the time we get to through. Okay. So anything else in the chakra? No. Okay. Everything else looks good. Okay. Coming down into the heart chakra. All right. Yeah. We already knew that we had a little sense of betrayal from the universe going on in here. Heart chakra is what you think it is. It's, you know, love, love and, and self love and grief and betrayal and all of those things live in this chakra. So. Yeah, we, we already know we have a little sense of betrayal from the universe that's going on. And that's, you know, we already talked about how to clear that. So that's good. There's grief from the shutdown and, and being like, ah, right. So there's some grief that still needs to be cleared as a result of that. I will send you a sound healing on clearing grief at the end of this call so that you can listen to that. That will do some work for you. Just don't listen to it while you're driving. Okay. 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 So, okay. And then let's see here. How are you doing here? Ooh. Feeling that one. <laughs> I'm testing things. Yeah. That was <laughs> this is the most interesting experience I've ever had. Yeah. Okay. So your heart chakra isn't really super open. It's not shut down and padded and armored up like a lot of people I see, but it isn't really, it's sort of like your, your standoffish, right? Your heart chakra is like, mm, I like people, but I don't know that I want them this close, right? There's that, there's a, there's a, a, a little defensiveness in there and, and it's, it allows, it, it's like you have very limited people you will share your heart with. And it's, um, and, and it takes you a long time to believe that they love you. And so therefore, you know, getting sure. them, yeah. getting the energy to come into your heart is tough because you have to believe it before you'll let it in. Right. So yeah, doing some heart opening stuff would be super helpful and getting that going. Um, yeah. So there are, so a quick exercise for this is to open up the sharing of your heart with strangers. And the simplest way to do this is to, walk around in your, your town and smile at people and let them smile back. And every time somebody smiles at you, you receive it as a gift of love. Every time somebody opens the door for you or holds the door for you, you receive it as a gift of love. Every time somebody stands, moves out of the way for you on the sidewalk, you receive it as a gift of love. Every time somebody lets you out in traffic, you receive it as a gift of love. And this is how you start to practice because we can practice with strangers because we don't have to trust them, right? It's a momentary experience. It's a sure. momentary thing. We don't have to worry about what they're going to do on the back end and whether or not they're going to take advantage or anything else, right? We just, we could just take it as a gift. And so I want you to practice that because that will get your body and your energy field in the practice of receiving love. Okay. And that's going to help open this up for you. It's, it's one step in a larger process, but it's, it's a good step. Okay. All right. All right. Anything I'll else take, in I'll here? So, yeah, so you, you've got the piece in here. This one sort of connects with the third chakra, but when we don't receive love on a regular basis, we create a self-fulfilling prophecy within ourselves that says that we are not lovable because our inner child does not know the difference between not choosing to receive love and not having any love coming towards them. And so the inner child creates a story that says I'm not lovable because I'm not feeling any love coming in, even though it was our choice to not let it in. Right? So that piece is in there. And it's going to have to be unwound 
as you start to open up to receive the love from the universe, it's going to start to unwind itself. Okay. So you're going to find that that's going to be super helpful. Um, all right. And good. Yeah. I didn't ask, are you married in a relationship? Are you single? Single. Single. Okay. Single as they come. This is going to help a lot with dating. Just so you know, this, this process of, of releasing the not lovable piece, because it's going to, it's going to bring your, we tell other people how lovable we are by our energy field and our belief structures. And so when you feel attractive, when you feel lovable, when you feel like a great catch, then other people feel that way too. And your dating takes off. Right. So just as an FYI, be careful. Okay. <laughs> you're going you're to attract a lot of people that are really good, good, uh, really good fits. So, okay. And then, I like that. Uh, I'm okay with yeah, that. Yeah. Right. That works. That for doesn't me. suck. <laughs> yeah. Man. yeah. Okay. Let's come down into the third chakra. Third chakra is the will center. It is the place where we hold our power and all the stories we tell ourselves to rob ourselves of our power. So, so the third chakra is also where our, our identity and our inner child lives. So I'm going to start looking at the identity because we've already started talking about that. Um, <laughs> you know, the, uh, the big sock guys that, that are attached to the fans that, you know, the, like the Gumby looking. Oh yeah. That blow in the car dealerships or whatever. Yeah, exactly. In the car dealerships. So I kind of have that feel of what, you know, your identity is. You're like, Hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. Hey, I'm over here. I'm over here. I'm over here. It's a, it's a very big image, but a very inconsistent image because it collapses when the wind hits and things like that and so on. And it's a very visible image. It's like, Hey, look at me, look at me. I'm, I'm visible over, over big buildings and from down the road and whatever. So, which is, you know, as you're being the face of the company, that's not a bad thing. Right. But it's also a piece of paying attention to the fact that it's not actually you. Right. So it's, it's the image. It's that, that mask that we were talking about. So there are two ways that you can attract attention in the business world. One is through the look at me, look at me, right? Like I'm going to be bigger than life and I'm going to put myself out there and whatever. And the other one is to be solidly, authentically you from a place that is so clear and focused that people can't help but be attracted to it. That is a magnetic piece. The other one is a push piece. This is a pull piece, right? You're not actively pulling. You're just resonating so strongly that people are like, Ooh, what's that? Right. And so the invitation would be, and because I will tell you the second is much easier and much less ex- exhausting <laughs> than the first. So the invitation would be to see, you know, about p- potentially switching modes, right. And, and stepping more into who you are and sharing more of your authenticity, more of your vulnerabilities, your, your transparencies, right? And to be able to say, you know, this is what's going on and this is where we are and I would love to have you involved and this is what's important to me. This is my mission. This is what I'm passionate about. All of those pieces that not because they look good, but because they're what's true for you, Right. You can, you don't have to, to, you know, come out and tell the world, oh, you know, this sucks about where I'm at and whatever. You don't have to do that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying to let people in. So authenticity and intimacy are are very similar, right? So intimacy is into me, you see, right? Authenticity is I am being who I am and that's what it is, right? So that's, that's the piece that I'm, I'm inviting in this space. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's come into the inner child. What's that? No, I just said, bring it to me. Okay. 
yeah. We're, we're just slightly out of sync in this. So I keep hearing you just slightly after you say things. So it, it's fine. Okay. So let's look at the inner child and where the inner child is. Let's see. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. That's a first. Your inner child is riding a dirt bike. I have never seen an inner child riding a awesome. dirt bike before and 3000 energy scans I've done. <laughs> I have never seen it, but your inner child is riding a dirt bike and he's having a blast. Go me. So yeah, he, he is rocking and rolling and just having, having the time of his life. Let me see what that means. If there's any other meaning to that other than just having a good time. Um, Okay. So what they're saying is that play for you and you need to maintain a level of play in your life. Play for you, it takes more active roles. And when, as you step more into the leader of the company roles and not doing all of the everything roles, right? That you're going to need to be paying attention to giving yourself space for that more active level of play. And I know you said hockey earlier, but I don't know if that's seasonal or what, but, um, but there's, you know, what they're saying is that there's activeness in the play that you do. You like physical activity for play space. And so to make sure that you keep that on your docket as you build the life vision that we talked about. Okay. Um, let's see here. Okay. Yeah. So you got some martyr syndrome going on here, which is, you know, I'll take the hit for everybody else. I'll go down with the ship. I'll be the one who, you know, if, if anybody's got to take the hit, it's going to be me, blah, blah, blah. Right. Which is every business owner on the planet has a little bit of that because that's sort of the, that that's the job. Right. Um, yeah, but you're, you're kind of overdoing it. Okay. There's a way there, there's a pride that you take in that, that causes you to throw yourself in front of the bus more often than you have to. And so my, my strong suggestion to you would be that the next time you think you have to throw yourself in front of the bus, ask yourself if the bus has to be there. Okay. You know, is there another path in which you do? nobody has to be in front of the bus, right? Because part of your identity is built around the, I can, I'll be the one to throw myself in front of the bus, right? And when you take pride in that, and that's part of your identity, then you will draw to you situations that require that of you, okay? So you want to be, uh, I want you to, okay. as you're making the new identity, I want you to take that piece out, Okay. I want you to, to make a different path and say, I'm going to have a reserve account set up such that I don't have to ever throw myself in front of the bus again. Right. I'm going to have yes. <laughs> staff that, that does everything. So I don't have to throw myself in front of the bus ever again. Right. I want you to take that out of the identity piece because that is drawing things to you that are forcing you to do that. Okay. Yeah. I don't want that. No, no, uh, but, no. but it's something okay. you're very proud of in yourself. You're like, yes, I'm the person who I, I don't make anybody else do it. I never throw anybody else in front of the bus. There's, this is the pride goeth before a fall that they talk about is it's this type of pride. It's not, it's not arrogance. It's pride in things that we perceive of as good, but which cause us to create pain for ourselves. Right. So like I used to say, you're I was absolutely right understanding person you'll ever meet right and that's a problem because when i'm understanding then people walk all over me now i don't say that i say i am a very understanding person i will be this much more understanding than i am treated well right that's how i redefine that because i'm not getting walked all over i still understand why you're doing it but i'm not going to be understanding of your doingness of it right that's that's not going to fly right so this is where totally we have following. to be careful yeah we, we have to be careful about our our identity and how we create it right okay 
All right, let me see what else is in here. We talked about the imposter syndrome, which is a not good enough thing, which is your inner child being overwhelmed. It's not actually true. You are totally good enough. You know exactly what you're doing. And you know that in, in when you're feeling good, right? So that's not a problem. Um, and then... A little bit of too big, too much going on here. So too big, too much is, you know, sit down, kid, you bother me sort of thing, right? When you were a kid, it was like, ah, I'm all over the place. Ah, blah, 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 blah. And so we get this story that we're too much, that like we're a burden to the people around us because we're too much, right? Um, I, I don't have this in spades for you. I mean, it's not like hardcore, but it, it does exist here. And that that will limit your ability to just, you know, right now you're playing the role of being the face of the company. But when you step into the authenticity piece, if you don't address this too big, too much piece, uh, you're going to have a harder time holding that because you're going to just be you. And you is like, I'm too big, too much. There's, there's a piece in there. And so you're going to have to unwind that piece in order to be able to step in from an authentic place into that role. Does that make sense? Okay. okay. It does. So, yeah. You know, right now when you step into the role, you're playing, it's like you're playing a part and you're having a great time with it, but you're playing a part. Okay. All right. I just need to check in because we're only at the third chakra. Do you have a little extra time? I have all the time you need. This is okay. incredible. So okay, yeah, great. Okay. <laughs> Keep going. Fire all away. Right. Awesome. All right. So let's see here. What, what else have I been looking for? Um, no, not, not that. Okay. Yeah. Everything else looks pretty good here. So that's, that's pretty awesome. So I don't see a lot of blocks to your personal power. Uh, so this is, this looks really good. Okay, coming down into the second chakra. Second chakra is the sacral chakra. It's the one just below your belly button. It is sensuality, sexuality, creativity, fecundity, you know, things around, you know, being able to uh, reproduce and, and things like that. And you'll, in here, you also find things like addictions and attachments and shame and guilt and things like that. So uh, let me see what's here for you. Okay, so your second chakra is bright and shiny. There's a lot of energy running through it. I feel like there's a lot of creativity and a lot of passion. Passion is birthed here in this chakra. So there's a lot of passion going on. There's a lot of energy running through here. There's So it's totally open, happy, happy going. Let me see if there's anything in the way. Okay, so there's a little bit of guilt around the company and, and COVID. And so, you know, forgiveness is a wonderful thing to give yourself because, you know, nobody, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expects a worldwide pandemic. So, you know, um, right. uh, we were all caught a little off guard. It's okay. Um, I'm psychic and I only saw it a few months in advance, you know, so, you know. This, this is not something to, to okay. give yourself a hard time about, okay? And I love Carol Burnett's I definition of forgiveness. It is forgiveness is giving up all hope of a better yesterday. And yeah, I want to let that land, right? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah. So I suggest that you forgive yourself. I, I suggest that you give up all hope of a better yesterday. You stop shooting on yourself about how you should have done things differently and let it go, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's the only thing that's stuck in this chakra right here that I'm seeing. Um, yeah, not seeing anything else. This chakra looks golden, except for that one piece, okay? To just be able to say, nobody saw it coming and I'm along with everybody else and that's okay. I did the best I could with what I had and given the fact that I am where I am now, that didn't, that wasn't terrible because here we are, right? Yep. Yeah. You made it. Right. So that's what you do. Okay. All right. 
Let's come down into Good. the root chakra because second chakra looks great. Uh, let's see root. Let's see how this energy flow is going now. Oh, I was talking about the energy drain earlier. Um, root chakra looks really good right now. Let me let me see how crown chakra looks again now. No, we're still still locked up at the top. Um, the energy drain that I'm seeing usually when I see an energy drain, it's it's from somebody else. It's somebody else in your life who is just sucking the life out of you, right? But I do not see that here. What I'm seeing is that the I the the you know the crazy man, you know the the identity piece with the wild arms and everything that is what is sucking the life out of you. It's that holding up that identity of you know here's here's who I am. Look at me. Look at me as opposed to just being you. That's where the energy drain is coming from. Now, this is, it's already better since we did some of the work because when I looked at the root, the root is now wide open and flowing up and out. And so the stuff we did with the message from your mom that cleared that. And so that's already better. The crown chakra is just not open to let energy out because of that energy drain. As you pull your energy back in and you're not doing this thing, you know, the wild, wild thing, you're going to find that the crown chakra will be able to allow energy out again. I would definitely recommend doing the tree meditation that you can find on my YouTube channel, and that'll help you to get that energy flowing properly. Um, the, the challenge you're going to have is that if you don't change the identity piece and you do open that up, it, well, I mean, you're already going to be getting more energy already because of the clearing of the, the root chakra piece. So you may not notice it a lot because of that, but there is still a drain happening. And so if you find when you open the crown chakra and do the tree meditation, then if you find that that's a problem, then it's, it's, if you find you're low on energy, then it's, you need to look at the identity piece. Okay, because it's not, the answer isn't to close the crown chakra. The answer is to shift the identity piece. Okay, because crown chakra is clearing out energies that are stuck and, you know, spent and everything else. So you definitely want to let those energies flow out, but you want to make sure that you still have sufficient energy for yourself. Okay. And I can learn how to do that on your, your YouTube and whatnot, right? Yeah, the, the tree meditation will, will walk you through exactly how to do the opening of the crown chakra and the cycling of your energy. So, yeah, it'll walk you through that. Okay. Um, cool. And it's not yeah. a one and done, by the way. You're going to, you, because this is a habit for you and how you're holding your energy right now, you're going to want to do it, you know, daily for a while until you get there and you go, oh, look, it's already open. Great. Right. When you do that, then you can chill out. Right. You don't have to do it all the time anymore. You might want to just check it periodically. Right. Um, OK, cool. uh, let me see what else is in here. Hold on. Let me just, I feel like I need to do a quick check here. Give me one second. Um, yeah. OK. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Thought there was something else I was looking for, but no. I write these protocols and then I forget. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. All right. A little bit of fear around safety and security showing up. Not a lot. This is, this is standard entrepreneur stuff of, you know, can I, can I get this going at the level I want to do it and, da, 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 and all that stuff, right? It's, it's not like a big, huge thing, but it's a, it's there, right? So the, the thing that I'm going to, and, and the piece of this, that's the challenge for you is the lack of trust in the universe that's still showing up for you because when you can lean into, and I know that you're working with the same person I'm working with. So you could, probably just lean into the trust in her because you know that she knows what she's doing and you know that she'll get you there. But the, uh, the, yeah, just don't invest in the fears around safety and security is all I'm saying. Okay. Done. Let's see here. Just look at your manifestation here. Hmm. OK, 
Okay. So manifestation bubble slows down significantly in the heart chakra. And part of this is because in your awareness, um, uh, how do I say this? You have conflated love and money. So they are related in your world. And so, uh, you know, the people talk about the love languages and gift giving is a love language. If you grow up with gift giving as a love language that your parents used on a regular basis, then oftentimes you will, you will combine love and money in your awareness because gifts or cash became the form of love that you were used to receiving. And so the problem with that in a business is that if you are not open to receive love, then your business isn't open to receive money at the level that it could be. And so this makes the, the process of opening your heart chakra to be more crucial for you. So doing the exercise that I gave you is really super important because it's quite frankly, it's easier to open your heart than to split those two things up again. It's, it's very difficult to pull those apart when you've been living that way for decades, right? And, and it's not necessary if you can open your heart to receive. So that's the easier path. So let's take that one, right? I like the easier path. So that would be something to take a look at because that slows down your manifestation. Let me test and see what happens when we open that. Oh, look at that. That looks great. Up into the throat chakra. Yeah, that looks good. Third eye. Crown. Ah, yeah, that's wide open. Okay, that's great. Okay. So once you can open up that heart chakra, everything else just goes whoosh and, and that those hundred things come in and everything goes happy hunky dory. Okay. The, the one thing I will say is that you need to do better at asking for help. And so when you are feeling overwhelmed, when you are, you know, and asking for help includes hiring help just for the record, right? The, I can do it all does just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Okay? Yeah. All right. Guilty. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just, I said it three times in the hopes that you will hear it in your head every time you pick something up. Just because I can doesn't mean I should, right? So I want you to really pay okay. attention to that and see how much you can offload. Okay? All right, cool. Any questions about anything I've said so far? I no, I I still kind of shocked and awed that you can do all this. <laughs> like it's <laughs> but no, I don't have any questions. I'm kind of relieved and I don't want to say more excited cuz I was always kind of excited for this, but uh mm -hmm. no, I don't have any questions. I'm feel like I'm ready to get off the starting line and and go. Yeah. So the theme that I see for you, so there's, there's a couple different themes. One is uh, stopping putting on who you think you're supposed to be to do this and start stepping into who you actually are doing this. And so that piece will bring you the authenticity, which will reduce the energy drain, which will allow you to just be easier about things and to be more authentically you. And therefore it's less work. And therefore people who are naturally attracted to you will actually see you when we, when we live behind a mask, we attract people who are attracted to the mask, not to people, to, to us. And so it makes it harder for us to actually attract people who are really our people. And so that's going to help a lot. And then, you know, the, the other theme is to, um, well, it's, it, that's still authenticity, speaking your truth and, and all of that. There's another, you know, finding the structure and all of that is, is important too. But there, there's another one that's deeper, which is, you know, you have the option and this is entirely optional, but you have the option to go and develop your psychic gifts because you do have them. And you are using them, even though you're not aware you're using them. So that's another possibility for you to expand. 
I'm not sure that right this second is the right time for that because you got so much on your plate and that adds a whole nother layer of stuff. But, you know, once you have things sort of ticking along as per usual and and you've got people on boarded and you're you're doing just the CEO stuff for your company, then I think that might be a time to really think about looking into developing those gifts for yourself. Okay. 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 All right. I'll have to come talk to you because I'll probably need your help. Yes. Well, I'll be here. You know where to find me. So. Okay, good. All right. I do. Um, any any last thoughts before we finish up for the day? How How was that for you? It was really cool. And I feel, I don't know, like almost like I had a massage or something. I, I, I don't really know what this is kind of that whole, do I, when you were talking about, do I actually believe what is you know, if, if you would have told me like, oh, you're going to feel all these weird things, I'd be like, no, I won't. And kind of, I don't, I don't know. So <laughs> yeah. still trying to process what all just went down, but that was pretty neat. I have to say, like, I could totally do this again. Awesome. Yeah. I, I often find that when I do things like this, people listen to the recordings over and over again because they can't take in everything all at once. It's a lot. I mean, I just talked for an hour and 40 minutes straight. So there's there's a lot of stuff and what you will long? find yeah what you will find as you listen to this over and over again you're going to find that there are um there are things that you hear on the 6th 7th 8th listen to this that you did not hear in the beginning people call me up and they're like how did you add something into my recording and I'm like, I didn't. It was always there. <laughs> They're just like, no, I swear to God, it wasn't there. I listened to it like six times. I haven't heard this before. How did you add something? I'm like, it didn't add anything in. It was always there. So, but that's that's what happens is that when we're ready to hear it, it, it our brain keeps it. When we're not ready to hear it, our brain goes, yeah, yeah, whatever, la, la, la. <laughs> and it wanders off. Um, and so listening to it over and over again is super helpful for that. Okay. Awesome. All right. I totally will. I mean, you're amazing. Right. Thanks, Kelly. Like, yes, thank you. really. Thank you it. for coming on and being willing to be on the podcast with this. I, I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, you, you were a rock star and sitting with it and not getting defensive when anything showed up and things like that. So you, you rock. And I appreciate you so much for having come on the show. And that's what we have for this week, guys. So keep in mind that your attention is what magnetizes things to you and your intention is the magic you create in the world. So be careful what you choose and we will talk to you soon. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Show love yourself.